and it's headphones nail. Back to Headphones Neil Reviews, I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you a more hodgepodge variety of reviews for this week compared to usual, mostly because I was able to get through quite a bit for this week. So I still haven't resumed my gameplay of um, Knights of the Old Republic 2, but I do have another game in the meantime to make up for that. And also I had a chance to watch a couple of movies besides the show that started this week, so with that being said, let's jump right into it. Um, as far as the first movie to watch, or that I watched this week, um, I've been meaning to or wanting to rewatch um, John Wick, the very first one. I keep getting uh, recommended clips um, on YouTube to watch, so I rewatched the film, and overall, the movie still does hold up. Um, all the stuff with. Um, John losing his wife, or um, the Russian monster's kid, a Theon acting like a jerk, um, Aurelio um, telling the Russian mob boss that he struck his kid because he took John Wick's car and killed his dog, and basically just overall the whole vibe of it was still holds up, especially you know the Russian monster guy's um, speech to his son about John Wick being the guy you send after the boogeyman. His conversation with John um, when he tells him that he's back and all of that. So it actually made me want to now re-watch the second and third films. I like the fourth one, but since I also did watch that after it came out, um, I mean, I probably would watch it for the complete story, but overall, the first one still holds up. I enjoyed it. I liked the two-tone aspect of it. I think it was like a blue tone kind of, so kind of that muted, quiet tones amidst all the stuff that happened in the movie so um if you haven't watched john the first john week in a while then i definitely recommend watching it as far as the other movie to watch i was browsing around on um, amazon prime and for some reason or randomly three amigos um popped up as a movie that's uh, currently streaming so as of this recording um you should be able to stream three amigos i don't know why it showed up maybe they finally got the rights to sell it digitally or something but since I've been wanting to rewatch that for some time, I did end up watching it. Um, as far as films go, that also does hold up. It's good. It was still funny to have um, Steve Martin, Chevy Chase, and Martin Short um, on screen together um, doing their Three Amigos dance. The uh, spe the plethora speech or conversation that um, El Guapo gives to his, to I think Hefe was still funny. That I, that scene still makes me laugh. And overall, just the overall presentation of the movie still holds up. So it's one of those things where it would actually be interesting to see if they are able to do like a 4K conversion of it and enhance the color a little bit, make it sharp or something to kind of quote modernize it. But in general, as is, it still holds up visually and comedically. So if you haven't seen it in some time or never seen it at all, then I recommend watching that. Now, as far as the next couple of reviews, I'm going to do them together just because they're related. So for the first one, um, we recently had our uh, company trip to Nas Berry Farm. Um, so I kind of want to talk about that a little bit. So um, there wasn't anything specific we had in mind for you know the group of us that hung out together. So as far as the current stuff that's going on, it's in between Ghost Town Alive and the Boysenberry Festival, or I'm sorry, between the Boysenberry Festival and ghost town alive but they still have something going on called summer nights so they have you know different performances and bands and music and things like that in the evening so they have a band playing on the big stage and after sunset and then in a couple of other areas they have you know musicians and music going for that but in general overall it was a good experience they have some good spring flowers growing which were really pretty um we went on a few rides um for some reason they were having trouble with berry tails um, it kept breaking down, it was down for a little bit for like power or something like that, so, but they were really able to bring it back up and we were able to go on the ride, but it was still kind of herky-jerky, so I think it was just random, 
um, technical issues. Uh, similar thing with Pony Express where it went down for a little bit, but then it was back up for the rest of the day. Um, and then even like on the rest of the big rides, they were only running co uh, one car for most of them. So most of the rides were okay. The, the wait time was maybe half an hour to an hour, but Ghost Rider was the one with a two hour wait time for most of the day. Um, first thing in the morning was around three hours. So I'm not sure why they only had one car going on all the rides, but that was kind of the bummer that we didn't get to go on that. But regardless, it was a good day. It was a bit overcast. So that's actually one of those things that's nice for Knots is that because they don't have a lot of cover for a lot of the rides and pathways and things like that, except for, you know, rides like Berry Tales and um, Ghost Rider, um, an overcast day for Knott's Berry Farm actually works out because even at 70 degrees with the sun you would feel hot, but with overcast skies it actually stays relatively cool so it actually works out for the better. But other than that we just spent time going around, um, you know, doing some shopping, going on a couple of rides. We took the train around the um, park um, and kind of just hung out so overall a good time. So. Um, when we're in between fest or different events for Nosberry Farm, it is generally a good quiet day, but just note that, you know, sometimes they have rides down for maintenance or they only, they only have one car going on the big coasters instead of two, so the lines can be a little bit longer, so that's why I still recommend for the weekends getting a fast lane pass if it's in your budget, just so you can get on the rides as quickly as possible, especially if you're only planning on spending, you know, half a day or as little time as possible in the park so you're not spending too much time waiting in ri lines to get on the rides so um with that being said that's all i really want to talk about so in the link for the photo gallery um i do have one of my favorite shots or current favorite shots where i have the ex uh, accelerator car on the track with a photo of um supreme scream on the side so um, I d wanted to do something a little bit different for a photo and I, tr I it hit me that how about that kind of view so um, I shared that and then also in the evening um, that train that they have in Ghost Town with the flowers that's by the I think it's the one by Ghost Town Grow the one next to the blacksmith I got a nice little two-tone photo there where part of it is in general black and white and then the rest is in color but it has a very old west photo feel to it so um, you'll see that and then a nice uh, sunset picture with a um, photo of you know Supreme Scream, um, Accelerator and Silver Bullet and then the uh, cabin ride I guess whatever that thing with the K is so um, overall a good time was very relaxing so um, there is that I want to give that little bit of an update but in a related note for Roller Coaster Tycoon um, I did have a chance to try out um, North. Oh, sorry, not that one. I should have updated my notes before I started recording. Um, but um, the the um, so the um, map that I was able to finish was the. Um, Sorry, what was that name? What was it? Was the um, Grand Canyon Park where um, it's in the Wacky Worlds um, theme park group? And oh, sorry, not the. Uh, so the I started playing the Wacky the expansion packs roller coaster tycoon, and um, I wanted to you know check out the map, see how they were. So I was able to finish the. North America um, graphite group or North America Grand Canyon map in Wacky World and it's very rem reminiscent of the um, graphite group um, parks in Roller Coaster Tycoon. So um, overall one of the actual easier maps in Wacky Worlds um, compared to you know um, the Great Wall of China map and um, one of the other other ones that I will actually have an update for next week. I'm going to give it one more attempt, but I've been try um, trying one of the other maps, and for some reason the Wacky Worlds and Time Twister maps are unnecessarily, or not unnecessarily, but extra difficult to finish. Like, some of the requirements are really, really strange. So, 
Um, after the next map, I don't know if I'm going to keep playing them, but I'll probably get try them as needed or as I feel like it, but I'm, after the next map, I'll probably go back to the regular um, map. So the Grand Canyon map was actually relatively straightforward. I built a few rides that were, you know, lightweight. I had to think, um, redo the log ride ones, adjust the looping roller coaster once, and use the booster um, track style to make it finish the loop, but overall it was a good, interesting theming for the park, so um, I recommend that one if you want a slightly different park to finish. It's actually pretty big as far as roominess goes, so you can play around with it a little bit. Um, but that was one of those things where if you want to get into Wacky Worlds, I recommend the North America Grand Canyon Park, just because that is that does seem to be one of the e easier ones to play on. Um, with that being said, I'm going to round out this week's episode with some Star Wars reviews. So we actually had this two episode season premiere for The Acolyte. And in general, it was, or overall, I want to say it was okay. We have twins that were separated when they were very young. Um, one of them, or I guess both of them can use a force, force but one of them didn't, the good one didn't want to um, become a Jedi. She left the Jedi Order, so her Force powers are not developed. And then the other one um, felt that she was slighted, so she's she, I guess, is in training with the Dark Master. So we have the Jedi investigating that. Um, we had Carrie Ann Moss in the first episode, and then she died, so that was kind of... I didn't kind of really like that. I was hoping that she would be around for more of the season, if not all of it, unless they have... Um, that's the, unless they're gonna have like flashbacks to her character so we can get more of her backstory because it was super it was actually super or i was intrigued to know what she was doing in that cantina and get more of her character or i'm also hoping that we find out that she had not died or the stab wound was worse than it looked but then she was able to get a distress call off and the jedi were able to save her or something like that so we'll see how it goes over the season but i'm kind of hit or miss because the Jedi investigating uh, what happened to that the girl's twin sister is intriguing, but then the rest of it, like it didn't seem like for a two episode season premiere, um, it didn't seem like it was going um, very f far, or I don't know how like the rest of the season is going to deal with the pacing. So while I am intrigued because it's supposed to take place during the height of the Republic and like a hundred years before the events of the Phantom Menace, so I'm kind of curious to see what goes on. Maybe we're going to get um, Sidious's master in the series as the Dark Lord training this girl, um, which is going to ultimately lead to Sidious, or Sidious's master's master, which I think was a bit, if I remember my Sith lore, or Sith master rule of two lore. Um, but that's kind of where I'm hoping they go with it, where they deal with some of that stuff with the dark side of the Force, and all of this mystery is related to that, so we kind of get that Jedi and Sith um, two-tone storytelling arc to the Acolyte. Um, but with that being said, we'll see how it goes. Um, it wasn't a great premiere, so we'll see how the rest of it goes. Um, but I'm unsure at the moment. I mean, I'm super in thrilled because of Star Wars, but... Um, it depends on where they go with it and how they ultimately land the ending. So with that, um, this week a new Star Wars game was released to um, consoles and for mobile platforms. It's called Star Wars Hunters. It's a arena style game where you build up a team and then you fight in various Star Wars locations against other um, teams. So kind of different from, I think it's Galactic Heroes. There was another Star Wars game like this where you build up your team of various characters um, and fight against others. This is more of your more of like well, I thought of like Fortnite meets um, Battlefront, where you have your team. You're, it's not necessarily um, you know hero or villain level character, so not your Darth Maul or Rey or Finn or Luke Skywalker or anybody like that. You have you know. A stormtrooper guy, a dark Jedi, a light Jedi, a bounty hunter, various characters like that. And as you play and progress and, you know, level up, you can unlock more characters, unlock your existing characters, um, update your existing characters, things like that. Um, so you have your standard arena style game. 
you know, and then like early on you're in, um, you can go to like Naboo, it looks like Tatooine, um, Endor, and, Ver and I think, actually maybe it was Kashyyyk, I think it was Kashyyyk. So you're in various different locations like that. So you're in a in an actual map and playing fighting you know teams of four versus four. So at the base level, it's intriguing, but it's another just your standard Zynga um, arena style game. So you have so the UI. So over, actually, so I'll say the positive is the gameplay is fun and exciting. You pick your character that you want to use, and you have to defeat the other team. But the downside is that the UI is your standard um, arena fighter UI. So there's a lot of stuff going on on the load screen, on the uh, main screen. You have you know in-app purchases, and you know for the tutorial you can't skip it. You have to go through all of it until you finish the introductory section, and then you can poke around, look for upgrades and things like that. So um, all of that just with the Star Wars theme. So for me, it's kind of a down negative for that. So. Overall, playing the game initially, I give it about a 7 out of 10 because the gameplay is fun, the visuals are nice. You have a very a bunch of different toggles you can adjust for the settings, so you can switch between you know 30 and 60 frames per second, um, low, regular, high, and ultra high graphics, various audio settings. Um, it does have controller support, so if for like me, if you have a Kishi, Razer Kishi, you can use that to play the game. So um, that's actually one of those bigger positives. So um, for me, that's why I say in general it's a good game, but then the UI is still very, very noisy, so that always turns me off to games like this that it's not easy to know what you're doing unless you um, sit and like memorize or study the UI and know where everything's at. But as far as gameplay goes and overall enjoyment, I enjoyed it. It was good. 45 minutes actually went by really fast, except for one small glitch. Um, so other than that, I mean, it's a good game, so um, I might try it for a little while and see how it goes, but um, besides that, I, if you're a Star Wars fan or an Arena Fighter fan, then I recommend playing the game. It's available for free on um, of note that I saw was Android, iOS, and the Nintendo Switch. I think it's on the Xbox 2, or on the Xbox, Xbox and PlayStation as well. But at least as far as mobile platforms go, it's on Android and iOS, so um, you can easily install it, jump right into it, and start playing. So that is all for this particular review, so if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on this post um, or on the social media sites by visiting the any one of the sites I'm on at headphonesneal.reviews. Um, the website also has past episodes, a way to support the show and all of that good stuff. And of course, if you are a patron of the uh, podcast, then you can get early access to it, along with early access to the uh, video version. So if you want to check out that, then that is also an option that's available. Um, that can be found at headphone, or sorry, at patreon.com slash patelln01. Um, so now that I've got Star Wars Hunters out of the way, um, of course, the next gameplay that's coming soon is the next map for Roller Coaster Tycoon, and I'm also going to start getting back into my gameplay of Knights of the Old Republic, so look out for those videos coming back up on the YouTube channel again at youtube.com slash patelm01. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.